Well, we're continuing on uh, with our theme of the Holy Spirit. And by now, I trust that you're aware of the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I trust that you've seen that it's a positive ministry, that the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn us, uh, but is, is, is sent to, to, to help us, to, to lift us up, to, to build us up, to enable us to live a victorious Christian life. Um, you know, if you, if you look at the book of Acts, and we'll look at it in a moment, uh, real fruitfulness in the church, the church was only birthed after uh, the, the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost. And there was only true fruitfulness in the church after the empowering of the Holy Spirit. It's impossible to experience the level of fruitfulness that God's got for us without the empowering, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Over in Acts chapter 2, you know, in the, this is the first uh, filling of the Holy Spirit. This is the, the, the day of Pentecost. And it says in verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were, with all, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound, of heaven, a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. So then what happened is, you know, on top of each of them was this tongue of fire. And so there was this empowering, this baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, and it manifested and looked like fire uh, on top of them. And they were all full of the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, um, you know, th there's a couple of things I want to pull out here. The first thing is, is that um, the, 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 as soon as they received the empowering of the Spirit, the baptism of the Spirit, the infilling of the Spirit, it resulted in supernatural witness. They were able to operate in supernatural giftings. The gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy, if you look through, through the book of Acts. And uh, the baptism, the empowering of the Holy Spirit is the doorway to operating in supernatural gifts, in spiritual gifts. You, you know, you can do a spiritual gifts test and it can tell you that you're strong in this gift or strong in that gift or whatever. But if you're not empowered by the Holy Spirit, that thing is just kind of a carnal exercise revealing what you can carnally do without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, and it's never going to be as good as you, you know, as uh, if it was a supernatural gifting. Yeah, you know, I've uh, been in services where, where I, um, in, in ministry opportunities where, where I've told people things about their life that they've never told anyone else. And that's not because I'm gifted in my natural uh, 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 ability. It's, it's because the Holy Spirit has empowered me and enables me and shows me things. And I'm flowing in that gifting. You know, the Holy Spirit is the anointing on our lives. I'm flowing in that anointing to minister to people supernaturally. And all of us can do this. This is for every believer, not just for the, the pastor, the leader, uh, or whoever. Okay, but now here, here I want to focus in on the, the, the tongues of fire that rested upon them. You know, for, for many years, this has is, this is kind of confused me because um, what John the Baptist said that, that, um, that he baptizes with water, but one will come after him who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And I've heard many different things on it. And some people go to certain extremes and this extreme, that extreme. I don't want to focus in on all the different um, uh, interpretations of that. But, um, you know, when it comes to the, 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 the Holy Spirit baptism of fire, um, you know, there, I believe that there is a baptism of fire at the end. Uh, of the age, and that's a, a, a baptism of judgment. But there's also another baptism of fire, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you know, you don't have to call it the baptism of fire to experience the baptism of fire, okay? Uh, uh, but there's a positive baptism in the Holy Spirit, and that's the baptism uh, of um, uh, there's a positive baptism of fire, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and there's a negative uh, for us as believers. It'll be a positive baptism of fire, but the baptism of judgment at the end. And I'm not focusing in on the baptism of judgment right now, but I want to focus in on the positive one, which is to do with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For years, I was confused with this. You know, I've even refused to sing songs like that, and some of the songs I believe are a bit extreme and do uh, aren't really uh, maybe doctrinally correct. Um, but, you know, the, the bottom line is, is that the Holy Spirit manifested as uh, tongues of fire upon each of the, the disciples, the followers of Christ in that room when they received the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the fire represents God's presence. 
Okay, the fire represents God's presence. Now, I'll show you what else it represents in a moment. But I mean, just think to to Moses in the burning bush. You know, Moses uh, uh, was out in the wilderness and uh, he saw a a, a bush on fire and the, the fire wasn't burning the bush up. But the bush was on fire. It was something supernatural. And he came close and God revealed himself to Moses uh, uh, in the burning uh, as, a, as a, a fire, you know, which wasn't consuming the bush. So, yeah, Moses in the burning bush, fire represents God's presence. Okay, <clears throat> He led the, 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 his people, the Hebrews, uh, uh, through the wilderness to the promised land by a, 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 um, a pillar of fire at night. A cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night. Okay, um, so so just keep in mind this this tongues of fire that represented or that that rested upon them. And you know the other thing with it is um, I'm going to to Leviticus chapter nine. But the other thing with it is is that this baptism of fire, this baptism of the Holy Spirit, empowered them with supernatural gifting to be able to operate supernaturally. You cannot operate supernaturally without the empowering of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the the baptism of fire. Okay, they are one, I believe, and the same thing. Okay, so uh, Leviticus chapter 9, verse 23, it says, And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and uh, and, uh, blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared to all of them. Okay, and there came a fire, verse 24, out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. Okay, so now this is after the dedication of the temple, the tabernacle. Okay, and the glory came and the fire of God came and it consumed the sacrifice that they had placed on the altar. Now, if you, if, you, if you pay attention to that verse, you'll see that the fire came supernaturally. Okay? The fire wasn't something that, that Moses and Aaron had, had made or produced. God created that fire. He sent that fire. He consumed that sacrifice. And you know, this is really how God um, dedicated the temple. Okay? So, so you know, if you look at it in, in Leviticus chapter 9 here, um, the people are dedicating the temple and God kind of dedicates his temple with fire, which represents his presence. Okay. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 6, um, you know, it speaks about how our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We've got the Holy Spirit living inside of us. The way God dedicated his first temple was with fire. Okay, the way God uh, 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 began to indwell man with power was with the fire when the fire of God came upon them. And that's talking about the tongues of fire that came upon them. Now, you don't have to have a supernatural manifestation of tongues of fire appearing on your head. Okay, you know, it's it's exactly like what happened in Leviticus. God sent that fire, that fire uh, uh, appeared. Okay, in, in in the on the altar, and it consumed the sacrifice, and um, the 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 priests were, were were instructed to keep the fire going. They were instructed to to keep fueling the flame, keep putting you know uh, not to create another fire, but they were they were commanded to keep the fire going. Now, in the same way, you know, when we receive the the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's like a it's 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 an anointing, really. It's a, an anointing for service. Okay, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but, when you re- but you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be witnesses. That's talking about ministry. Okay, so the empowering of the Holy Spirit is for ministry. Okay, it's for a life of ministry. It's not just for the, mi- for the pastor or the fivefold minister. <clears throat> you know, this is for everyone. Okay, you know, as, a, as a Christian, you will be a poor witness. You will be a poor ambassador of Christ, a, a bad ambassador of Christ without his anointing, without his empowering, without his uh, uh, dedicating your, your, your temple, your body with Holy, Holy Spirit coming upon you and empowering you, that, that fire igniting you with a passion to be able to go and, 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 and do what he's called you to do. Because God's got a purpose for your life. God, God wants to use you to reach people. And you cannot reach the people that God wants you to reach without His empowering. 
The empowering enables you to, to serve God. You know, many people think that they're serving God. Yeah, you, you could be a deacon. A deacon in, in, the, in the New Testament, in, in Acts, is a server. Okay, a minister, someone who's serving. Whether that's in hospitality, waiting on tables. Whether that's um, administration. You know, a lot of, we, we serve God in these different areas. And a lot of people serve God out of the flesh, not out of the spirit. You know, if you're serving God out of the flesh, it means that you're serving God without His empowering. You're not serving Him with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit and not rely on the Holy Spirit, and you're still serving out of the flesh. But, you know, when we receive the empowering of the Holy Spirit, when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire, what it does is it, is it enables us to do supernatural ministry, to do supernatural things. We can do things that we couldn't do before. You know, teaching the Word of God, should never be done without the empowering of the Holy Spirit because we'll botch it up, we'll mess it up. You know, it's a supernatural thing to preach the gospel. But even Jesus said to his disciples, don't you know, go wait in Jerusalem, don't go and preach the gospel. He said, go wait in Jerusalem until you receive the power from on high, then go into all the world. You know, that, that, that's the order, is before you try and be a witness, be empowered to be a witness. You know, with someone, a, a Christian, Trying to, to be a witness for Jesus without the empowering of the Holy Spirit is like you know, you're trying to drive a car without any petrol. You're going nowhere slowly. You might be able to put the handbrake down and push it you know, in neutral. But honestly, you're not going to use that car to its full potential without petrol, without gas. You need to put fuel into your tank in order to, to get going. And the awesome thing with the baptism of the Holy Spirit is you don't need more fuel. Okay, the fuel is always there. The fuel never runs out. All you need to do is use what you've got. Realize what you've got. But we're going to get there in a moment. You know, Leviticus um, chapter 10. And um, I'm going to read from verse 1. It says, And uh, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire thereon, therein, and put incense thereon. And offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. So the sons of Aaron, it says there, they went and created their own fire. They offered strange fire. Verse 2, and there went fire out from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. Okay, so now what is this strange fire? Okay, the, the point is in here in, in Leviticus is that they were supposed to continue, keep the fire continuing. They were supposed to continue the fire that God had started. They weren't supposed to bring their own fire. They brought their own fire, which was a strange fire. In the New Testament, we're not supposed to live uh, out of our own fire. We're not supposed to live out of our own strength. You know, we're called to receive that fire, receive that empowering of the Holy Spirit, and then continually surrender to the Holy Spirit, yield to the Holy Spirit, seek God with all our hearts. You know, we, we don't live for God out of our own ability. It's Christ in us, Christ through us. And so, you know, the Christian life if, is impossible. That's what I've been trying to get across to you up until now. The Christian life is impossible to live in your own strength. God didn't intend for you to live the Christian life in your own strength. You know, it's supposed to be lived as Christ in you and Christ through you. And so we need to receive the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And then we need to, you know, we need to keep that fire going. How do you keep the fire of the Holy Spirit in you, you know, going? Well, you, you, you pray in the Holy Spirit in, in, in tongues. That, that keeps it stirred up. But, but it's a continual surrendering to the Holy Spirit. It's a continual yielding to God's will. Like if, if, if you're studying the word and God reveals something to you, saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to do that. If, if you feel impressed on your heart to do something, do it. You know, uh, obviously there's a way to interpret, is this God or is this kind of just me or whatever. But the point is, is that a lot of the times we don't you know, uh, uh, know what the next step is because we didn't listen to the last step. We're not surrendered. We're not yielding to, to God, you know, speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you know, the Holy Spirit is, is God's representative to us on earth. It is God's Spirit. That's, that's us connecting to God, is having the Holy Spirit, and it, it amplifies our relationship with God. And now, because we are filled with His Spirit, we are ambassadors for Him to the world. Okay? Yes, the Holy Spirit is ministering to unbelievers, 
and re- trying to reveal Jesus to them and, and drawing people to, to Jesus. But we are his ambassadors who go to those unbelievers who the Holy Spirit is ministering to and we preach the gospel to them and lead them to salvation. The Holy Spirit will, will, will lead them to salvation to a point, but cannot kind of help them cross the bridge. We have to be the ones to preach the gospel. It's our privilege. Okay, so here we need to continually yield and surrender to the empowering of the Holy Spirit and uh, for it to be able to uh, increase in our lives or anything. You know, if you look at um, the book of Acts, after the manifestation of fire, there wasn't another manifestation of tongues of fire. Okay, and that's that's like I said, it's because there's the initial fire that was given to the church and the church has just kept it going. You know, uh, 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 Moses and Aaron, God gave them the fire on the altar and they had to just the priests had to keep it going. But then Aaron's uh, sons came and made their own fire. And that was a strange fire that was not acceptable to God. You know, uh, 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 in the book of Acts, the fire was given and it was never taken back. God has never removed his spirit from the church. Now, you get a lot of crazy Christians, just to be blunt for a moment, you know, a lot of crazy Christians who talk about you know, the Holy Spirit coming and going and he's just he so he's not sure. You know, the Holy Spirit will never leave us, never forsake us. God is not ever taking his Holy Spirit away from us. And so the, uh, we don't, we don't uh, 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 need to call the Holy Spirit to come. You know, I've been in, in church services. I, I was one of those Christians who, you know, before the service, you're calling out to God, God, please come. You know, send your spirit. We want your spirit here. You know, that if, if, if you pray like that, you don't know what the word says concerning the spirit. What the word says concerning the spirit is that God will never take him away. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came and went came on specific people for a specific time, for a specific purpose, and then he went. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit came into the church and never left. And now the infilling is passed on, the, the, the fire is passed on by believers laying hands on each other and by us receiving you know, in faith. Okay, so the fire is now passed on. We don't need new fire. We only need to fuel the fire and keep it going. And I think that, that we need to, to, you know, the church needs to catch a wake up with regards to that. We've got the fire. A lot of Christians are waiting for the fire, waiting for the Holy Spirit. And they, 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 all they do is they stay in their prayer closets. Whereas God has given us His Holy Spirit. He's given us His fire. Now we need to go for it. Okay, so at Pentecost, the fire of the Holy Spirit came. And now we pass it on. We stir Him up. And He never leaves us. Okay, so now what, what, what is this? Now, some of the benefits of this, as I said, of having the Holy Spirit and the baptism of fire is that it ignites within us a passion for God's will, a passion for God's mission. But it also ignites within us the ability to be able to operate supernaturally, to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. You cannot operate in the gifts of the Spirit without the Spirit. <laughs> I mean, it's a no-brainer, okay? But, you know, one of the... Um, the effects of the Holy Spirit is that it, it brings a boldness upon you. Okay, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power isn't something weak. Power isn't something timid. Power isn't something which is just, you know, a, a, a floppy. Power, is, your power has a backbone. The Greek word for power in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is dunamis. You know, uh, it, it gives the, the indication of dynamite. You know, where, where it's like something powerful. It's something strong. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be a witness. That doesn't mean you'll be a, a timid witness. You know, you haven't received a spirit of fear. But you've received the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. We've received the spirit of power, a spirit of supernatural ability, a spirit of, of being able to do what Jesus did, and even greater works than that. So if we look at Peter's example, okay, um, the apostle Peter, uh, uh, he, he, he really went from being a coward to, to being as bold as a lion. I mean, he forsook the Lord. He, he denied Christ. You know, in front of people, publicly, after, while, while Jesus was being crucified, after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he stood up in Acts chapter 2 with boldness, preached the first sermon of the church, and 3,000 people got saved. That's boldness. Before Acts chapter 2, there was only 120 uh, disciples who managed to make it to the upper room to wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like Jesus had commanded. Okay, that just shows us that even if you're a Christian, you're not always going to be, Christians aren't always going to be obedient. It takes a surrendering 
to, to God's will and to the Spirit in order to see uh, uh, God's fruitfulness, in order to see uh, uh, the power manifest that, that we, we, we desire and God desires for us to be manifest. But when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, with the power of the Spirit, they got bold. And in an instant, the church was born with 3,000 people saved in one moment. That's supernatural fruitfulness. You know, the Holy Spirit gives us courage, gives us a boldness to endure persecution, even unto death. If you look at it, you know, Stephen, the first martyr of the church, the first person who was killed for his faith, it says there that he was full of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, when he was, was, was being stoned to death, it doesn't mean that he was you know, taking drugs. It means that people were throwing stones at him. Okay, so it's not stoned as in uh, he was out of it. It was stoned as in he had rocks being thrown at him and he was dying. Yeah, he was full of the Spirit in that moment and he had boldness and courage to face death. Okay, um, the Holy Spirit empowers us to face difficulties, danger, pain and death without any fear. Okay, this is, if we look through Acts, this is what we see. You know, the Holy Spirit gives us boldness, power to do the supernatural and to live a supernatural life. You know, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to speak and to live out the word, the word boldly. You cannot live out the word or speak God's word boldly without the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, without the empowering of His Holy Spirit. You know, the, the, the point is, is that, you know, like I said in, in, in Leviticus, God anointed or dedicated his temple with fire. He sent that fire. It wasn't manufactured by Aaron or Moses. Okay. In the New Testament, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. And he anoints us, his temple. He dedicates us, his temples, with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, you need the fire of God inside of you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to empower you to live a victorious and fruitful and abundant Christian life. Now, if you're, you're, you might be saying, I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I speak in tongues, but it doesn't really feel like there's much power to it. You know, if you're in that position where you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet, you're going to be able, we're going to give you an opportunity after today's service, after this message, to receive the empowering of the Holy, Holy Spirit and will radically change your life. If you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you're not experiencing any power, then, you know, it might be a knowledge problem because fruitfulness comes from understanding. So, you know, get, it, get, get rooted. Um, the, 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 the Rooted Discipleship Guide, you know, goes through the lessons on the baptism of the, of the Holy Spirit um, specifically, and understand more about what the Holy Spirit's role is in our lives and how you can operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you'll start to see a bit more fruitfulness. But, but one of the things with the Holy Spirit is <clears throat> you can have the Holy Spirit, but you need to continually stir Him up in you. Okay, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, it says, Therefore I remind you, Paul writing to Timothy, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Okay, it's talking about the, the Holy Spirit being transferred to, to Timothy, the fire of God being transferred to Timothy by the laying on of Paul's hands. And you know what that brings with it? The gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, you'll only operate in the power of the Holy Spirit if you stir up the gift that is in you. But also you'll only operate in the gifts of the Spirit if you stir up the gifts that are in you. We're going to talk about gifts at another stage. But you, know, you need to realize that you, you might have the gift of prophecy. You might have the gift of healing. You might have the gift of words of knowledge, words of, of wisdom, uh, and all the other gifts. But you will not operate in them unless you stir them up and unless you step out in faith. Like the scripture says, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. The spirit of the subject is prophet to the, uh, subject to the prophet, which means that uh, uh, the Holy Spirit in you is at your, um, you, 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 you step out in faith at your discretion, at your choice, at your will. The Holy Spirit will never control you. The Holy Spirit will not overpower you. The Holy, you, you yield to the spirit and the spirit flows through you. If you don't yield, the spirit won't flow. Okay, the, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So this is just saying, hey, you know, stay stirred up. Don't grow cold. Um, next scripture in Acts chapter 4, 29 to 31, it says, Now, <clears throat> Lord, look at their threats and grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through your, the name of your holy servant, Jesus. 
And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled uh, together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word uh, of God with boldness. Now, if you look at this verse, it's talking about people who were already baptized in the Holy Spirit, disciples who had already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and what it's saying is they're praying and they're asking for for God to to basically they're stirring up the spirit within them so they can have that boldness to step up. Because, you know, if you don't stir up what's inside of you, it's all it's just going to settle down to the ground. God can't knock you to be able to stir up what's inside of you. You've got to stir yourself up. I can lay hands on you. I can try and stir you up. But unless you stir yourself up, unless you receive, unless you step out in boldness, it's going to do diddly squat for you. It's going to do nothing. You're not going to experience and, and live in the power of the Holy Spirit. You're not going to experience the fire of God in you, through you, unless you stir it up, unless you step up in boldness. Okay, one of the points I want to make here is just that the Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. The Holy Spirit hadn't left these disciples. They had the Holy Spirit. They were stirring up the Holy Spirit in them. Okay, 1 John 2 verse 27 says, But the anointing which you've received from Him abides in you. The anointing of the Holy Spirit abides in you. He doesn't leave. Abide means stays is fixed okay there's an initial filling of the holy spirit that you receive you can do you receive it through the laying on of hands you can receive it by faith and um uh, you have to receive it by faith and then you know after that there's subsequent fillings so there, there's there's other experiences where we need to stir up the holy spirit you know lay hands on one another stir up the spirit within each other uh, uh, and receive so that we can step out in even more power Okay, and this is really important. I like this in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Don't be drunk with wine, which will ruin your life. This is the easy to read version, but be filled with the Spirit. Okay, this is a command, this is not an option. Every believer should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's also saying you shouldn't be filled with wine. <laughs> so maybe that's a word for some of you. But yeah, you know, wine isn't wrong, excess is. Okay, so you know, we, every believer should be filled with the Holy Spirit. But you know, being filled is in, in, in this scripture, being filled is in the present tense, making it a continual command. So it's not saying be filled and then you run off that one filling. It's saying continually be filled with the Holy Spirit, which means you, know, you, you, you receive the filling and that you do have it then, but you need to continually stir him up in you and step out in faith. Okay, uh, um, you know, we need to keep in mind spirit, soul, and body. Okay, our spirit is filled with the Holy Spirit. Our spirit is filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with power. But we need to work that out into our emotions, our soul, and into our actions, our body. The Holy Spirit comes upon us, and we need to stir Him up so that we, and, and yield by yielding to Him, by, by uh, 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 submitting to Him, surrendering to Him so that He can, 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 can work in us and through us. Okay? So I think it's, it's important for us you know, to, to, to realize that the Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. We are the ones who perceive His presence and His power stronger sometimes than other times. Okay? The Holy Spirit's control and influence uh, uh, over our bodies and over our souls fluctuates because it fluctuates in proportion to how much we perceive Him, how much we're focused on Him, how much we're, we're surrendered to Him. So I want to encourage you, daily continuously throughout the day, pray in the Spirit, yield to the Spirit, stir up the Spirit within you so that you can experience the power and the flow of God in your life. Okay? You need to renew your mind to this. You need to focus on it. If you want to experience a fuller, uh, 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 you know, a, a continual, uh, a fuller experience of the Holy Spirit, it, it's something you've got to focus on. You know, what you honor, you amplify in your life. What you focus on, you amplify, you give room. If you give room to something, it, 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 it kind of like uh, consumes you, okay? In a positive sense and a negative sense. In the, so in the positive sense, focus in on the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Continually re, re, uh, uh, surrender to His power in your life. And you'll start to see the, the gifts of the, the, the Spirit manifest in your life and through your life. And you'll see the power and things begin to flow. You know, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. You feel Him stronger sometimes than other times. Okay, There's times in, in, in services where, where I feel uh, the presence of God manifest 
But even if I don't, I know He's there. My feelings fluctuate. My feelings come and go. Sometimes I, I feel the presence of God strong. Sometimes I don't. But I know He never leaves me. I know He's always with me. Which means that even if you know there's a crisis and someone's, let's say, dying or very sick or something like this, I don't have to feel an anointing or feel the presence of God in order to deal with it. I don't have to feel something to be able to pray in power and see results. Because that anointing abides in me. I've got that power. I just need to release it in faith and it works. Whether I feel it or not. It's not we don't go by our feelings. We go by truth. The, the truth of God's word which says that he's always in us. Okay. So Romans chapter 8 verse 11 is a brilliant scripture for this. It says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So this is saying, you know, that it, it, it's a present tense reality for us. It's saying that the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. If he's dwelling in you, he doesn't leave you. He's living there. You're his dwelling place. You're his temple. Okay, and if that's true, then you know he's giving life to your mortal body through the spirit which lives in you. Okay, so you know what you, you you might not feel the spirit of God in you, you might not feel him giving life to your mortal body, but it is a reality, it's happening. You just need to perceive it, you need to acknowledge it, you need to 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 recognize what the truth of God's word is that it is true, and then you'll start to experience it more. I've seen in my life when I acknowledge uh, the truth of God's word, I acknowledge that God's presence is with me, then I start to feel it more. I don't go by my feelings, but feelings follow what I'm, where I'm going. <laughs> okay, so we don't need anything more from God. We just need to recognize what we've got, and then it starts to manifest. You know, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, don't be drunk with wine which will ruin your life, but be filled with with the Holy Spirit. You know, I like how this verse puts it because it's, it's kind of drawing a picture between being drunk in, in the wine and then being drunk in the Holy Spirit. So it's saying be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. Okay, be filled, be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. You know, after the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Peter said to the crowd, what did he say? They are not drunk as you suppose. Okay, so they look drunk. When, when we are stirring, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when we're stirring them up within us, sometimes we will experience manifestations where we will seem drunk. <laughs> Things might start to happen which are out of the ordinary like that. It, it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't happen, it's not an indication that the Holy Spirit isn't here. You know, but it, 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 if it does happen, it's just a manifestation of it. We don't go by the manifestation, but the manifestation follows us. And the, the truth is that we're filled with the Spirit. You know, if you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've got the Holy Spirit, even if you don't experience that manifestation. I was teaching at a leadership class um, once. And, uh, you know, after praying in the beginning, I, I was slurring over my words. And you know, I've never been drunk in, with wine or alcohol, so I don't know what that's like. But you know, as I was, I was speaking, I was really just confused and out of it. And it wasn't a negative thing. It was really just the presence and the power of the Spirit. And I enjoyed it for a moment, got over it, and managed to come to my senses and carry on. But it was, it was administered to me. It was a blessing. And uh, you know, through that, I was also able to, to minister to other people. So you know, sometimes there are things like that. You know, what does drunkenness do to you? <laughs> I've seen people who are drunk, and drunkenness changes their personality. The filling of the Holy Spirit changed Peter's personality, and he became bold where he was a coward. God can do the same thing for you. He can transform your personality through you being filled with the Spirit so that you can make an impact for Him, so that you can live the life that you're called to live. Amen? Well, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. And I just want to encourage you, if, you've, if you haven't received the empowering of the Spirit, receive the empowering of the Spirit. You know, don't leave this place without coming forward and asking someone to pray with you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you to stir them up. You stir them up by praying in the Spirit. You know, we're going to speak about that next week, but praying in the Spirit and then also by um, uh, uh, surrendering to the Holy Spirit, yielding to the Holy Spirit, yielding to the Word of God, the will of God. And as you do that, you'll start to see an increase uh, of power manifested in your life. I trust that this has been a blessing to you, that it's stirred you up, and I'm excited to see the fruitfulness that's going to come from it in your life.